Okay, we're going to continue our discussion about the gas laws and what we're going to do is take what we learned in Boyle's Law, Charles Law, and Avogadro's Law and put them all together or combine them into what we refer to as the combined gas law. So what this is going to do is put together pressure, volume, and temperature, but then we're also going to add moles to that equation. So when you're doing these problems, essentially all you need is the combined gas law, and then you can solve any of the problems where the conditions are changing. Okay, so this is the form of the law that we're going to use, or the equation that we're going to use, but typically we would write it P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. So this is really the combined gas law. Typically moles is not included, but what we can do is just put moles in there also, and then that way it in, the, the equation includes all the variables that we use so, to solve the gas laws. Now it's important to understand that when you're doing these problems, you're talking about situations where conditions change. So if we change the pressure from one thing to another, what happens to volume? Or if we change the pressure and temperature, keeping moles constant, what happens to volume? So we're always talking about situations where the conditions change. We'll deal with when they don't change in the next vodcast. So let's do a couple of problems. Okay, we've got a balloon containing 1.3 liters of air at a certain temperature. So as usual, like I was doing with the other problems, let's start writing the variables. So we have V1, in fact, let me write them up here. V1 is equal to 1.3 liters. T1, that's 24.7 degrees Celsius. And right away, I'm going to convert that to Kelvin. So that's 297 0.7 Kelvin uh, is placed in a beaker containing liquid nitrogen at negative 78.5. So what we're saying here is we've changed the temperature to negative 78.5 degrees Celsius. And that is going to convert to 194.5 Kelvin. So what will the volume of the sample of the, uh, sample of the air become? All right, so what we have here is volume and temperature. So essentially, that's Charles's law. But if you just know the relationship, P1V1 over T1N1 is equal to P2V2 over T2N2, what we're doing here is we're using volume and temperature, so we just don't include pressure and moles. So essentially, again, regardless of the variable you're using, it all comes down to this equation. You plug in the variables that you're using, and you just leave out what you're not losing. Not, you just leave out what you're not using, not losing. Okay, so let's put, put our variables in. We have 1.3 liters over 297.7 Kelvin. Is it, now remember, always change your temperatures to Kelvin. Is equal to V2 over 194.5 Kelvin. When we solve for V2, we get 0.85 liters. And again, think about this intuitively. If you're decreasing the temperature, what happens to volume? Well, you know that that's a direct relationship, so you know volume has to go down, and it does. It goes from 1.3 liters to 0.85 liters. So you want to not only be able to do the calculations, you want to be able to understand the relationships so you can solve problems intuitively also. Okay, let's just do one more problem because these are pretty straightforward so you can practice the problems in your practice packet more. Okay, we have 2.45 moles. So we're going to say N1, 2.45 moles. And remember to write your units all the time. It'll be helpful as the year goes on. We have a volume equal to 89 liters. We're solving for the new volume if we change the moles to 2.1 moles. Same conditions of temperature and pressure, so we don't need to include those. 
Well, let's think about the problem before we solve it mathematically. If we're decreasing the number of moles, what's going to happen to the volume? Okay, get an idea in your head. Now let's solve it. So we've got 89 liters over 2.45 moles. V2 over 2.1 moles. Do the math and we get 76.3 liters. So our volume went down. And that should make sense because again, volume and moles are a direct relationship. So if the one goes down, so does the other one. So when you're thinking about your equation, if you're comparing something in the numerator to something in the denominator, that's always a direct relationship. If you're comparing something in the numerator to something in the numerator, that's always an inverse relationship. So you might want to think about that both mathematically and intuitively. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Avogadro's Law, and we've put them together with the four variables, pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. And we've combined those into the combined gas law, which usually takes the form P1V1, P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2, but we can include moles in there also. So a couple things to remember. Know the relationships. Pressure and volume are inverse. Pressure and temperature direct. Volume and temperature direct, etc. Temperature is always in Kelvin. Make sure all of your units are consistent if you're using liters, liters, I'm sorry, Atmospheres, atmospheres, or tors, tors. Just make sure your units are consistent. And then also know the relationships both mathematically and intuitively. In the next vodcast, what we're going to do is take a look at steady state conditions instead of conditions that are changing. As usual, mail your or email your questions to Hannon and Chemistry, and then do the practice problems in your packets.